Hi, this is Yosif Xenogiannis and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation. And this is case 46 for the manual of non-CTO coronary interventions. This is a case of calcification and tortuosity in a patient with previous coronary bypass grafting. The patient was an elderly woman who presented with a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction. She had a previous coronary bypass graft surgery with Lima to LAD and a vein graft of the obtuse marginal branch and multiple comorbidities. She had a known CTO of the right coronary artery within previously placed stents. She also had an osteal occlusion of the LAD and severe disease in the circumflex with some competitive flow into the uh, superior uh, branch, which is the first obtuse marginal branch, and uh, uh, TIMI 2 to 3 flow into the second obtuse marginal branch. When we look at the lima, there was good feeling of the LAD, which was in turn given collaterals to the PDA and um, the right coronary artery, and the vein graft to the first obtuse marginal branch was actually patent. However, there was a significant lesion immediately proximal to the touchdown of the saphenous vein graft. So patent saphenous vein graft supplying OM1, severe lesion proximal to the touchdown, with the second OM getting intermittent flow both retrograde through the SVG and also undergrade. So this is the clinical situation and this seemed to be the culprit lesion of the proximal part of the uh, obtuse marginal branch. How to approach this? One approach would be to go undergrade and wire into the OM2 and stand around it. The second approach would be to um, go retrograde through the SVG and then either stand this lesion or stand even more proximal. And in general, when we have previous bypass graft patients, we um, and there is a saphenous vein graft lesion, which is not the case here, but one wants to treat the native coronary artery as possible. But the challenge is that the native coronary artery does have uh, often significant calcification, and especially in the circumflex, there is significant tortuosity. The initial plan was to uh, perform retrograde crossing essentially from the SVG and go proximally and then recanalize because we anticipated significant difficulty going undergrade. However, despite having an AL1 guide, which are very useful for engaging uh, left sided saphenous vein grafts, a super cross microcatheter to navigate through the distal, distal touchdown, which is often challenging because of the tortuosity, and the polymer jacketed wire, we were finally able to advance a microcatheter, this is a Corsair, essentially all the way uh, into the proximal OM1, but then we could not wire retrograde into the native left main. We decided to leave it there and potentially go with an undergrade guide catheter. We obtained radial access and tried to engage the left main, but it was extremely challenging to engage and we ended up uh, giving up our saphenous vein graft position and switching to a femoral EBU guide engaging the left main. To our surprise, there was actually fairly easy crossing of the circumflex into the second obtuse marginal branch with a polymer jacketed guide wire over a Corsair microcatheter, which uh, highlights the point that in a CTO or complex lesion, sometimes it's probably best to just try for at least a few minutes to go undergrade because this may work and obviates all the difficulties associated with retrograde crossing. The problem though was afterwards because of severe calcification that the balloons were ruptured. And this is an example of a balloon undilatable lesion, fairly common in previous bypass patients, that is de novo. There are no previous stents because if there are stents, the atherectomy is lower down on the risk because of the um, risks associated with doing atherectomy within previous stents, especially fresh stents. However, for de novo lesions, there are essentially two options. One is to do upfront atherectomy, especially in cases of severe calcification, especially if it's expensive. Or the other option is to first try balloons or body wires or modified balloons and laser before actually going to atherectomy. And this is still a matter of judgment, 
Many people would support going straight to a thorectomy if the calcification appears to be extremely severe, especially if it's superficial calcification. And this is where intravascular ultrasound or OCT can help. But uh, the other option, as happened in this case, is to first try a balloon and see if that works. And if not, then switch to a thorectomy. The caveat of this uh, approach being that if a dissection happens, it might make the atherectomy higher risk. Here we did have a rupture of the balloon, suggesting that the balloon was unlikely to work. So we did uh, uh, perform several passes of orbital atherectomy. And after doing that, we were able to expand with a balloon. Following atherectomy, we always want to perform balloon angioplasty before placing any stents, just to ensure that there is adequate expansion of the lesion. So stents were placed essentially all the way from the left main into the second obtuse marginal branch and uh, were postulated at high pressure, giving a nice final result with TIMI3 flow in the second obtuse marginal branch. There is no more undergrade flow into the uh, first obtuse marginal, but this has a good looking saphenous vein graft. So several lessons from this case. The first one is that patients with previous coronary bypass are likely to have significant complexity, specifically significant calcification and CTOs. It turns out that once one places a bypass graft in a native artery, the chance of forming a CTO more proximally, proximally significantly increases. The second is about uh, wiring through tortuosity that can make things difficult, but similar to many CTOs, it may be best to first try undergrade crossing Instead of trying retrograde crossing, undergrade crossing will be needed anyway for undergrade preparation, even if retrograde crossing is eventually performed. Third point is regarding the use of femoral versus radial axis. In this particular case, using radial trying to engage the left main while maintaining our position of the guide in the SVG did not work. And radial sometimes will provide less support. So being flexible and switching to an alternative access site can facilitate success and make the case more efficient. And fourth, it's important to have an algorithm about uh, balloon undilatable lesions. And when that algorithm is followed, that provides guidance for live performance in the case. And the brief overview is that you can either start with balloons or with a thorectomy. If it's really severe calcium and extensive, uh, especially superficial and uh, extending in an extensive portion of the vessel, then upfront thorectomy is probably the better way. If the calcium is less severe or if there is significant tortuosity and small vessel size, trying first the balloon may be a good first option. And if that fails, then switching to a thorectomy is a reasonable way to go. Thank you.